Hey guys, JJ here. In anticipation for Resident Evil 9, I'd like to share my thoughts on the story, characters, and the possible conclusion of the franchise. So with that being said, let's get right into it. I've covered the majority of the rumors, and I've also covered where the series may go based on the information we've got thus far. Today I would like to dive into some of the things I would like to see, including the story, gameplay, characters, enemies, and more. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like, and if you would like to see more speculation videos on this channel, let me know down below in the comments. Alright, let's get into the story. Continuing from Village's open-ended storyline, Chris discovers the BSAA is creating bioweapons. He and the Houndwolf squad head to the BSAA HQ for answers. I believe it's crucial to build on established story elements rather than leaving another open-ended plot, a tendency Capcom often follows. As Chris investigates further into the shady dealings of the BSAA and the use of bioweapons, he learns the BSAA has been infiltrated by the Connections. This syndicate was first mentioned in Resident Evil 7, but has been involved within the world of Resident Evil since the early 2000s. Chris then learns there is few he can trust and that the Connections have even made their way into the Hound Wolf squad. He defects from the team and goes on the mission alone. Realizing he's going to need help, he contacts the only people he can trust, Jill Van Valentine, Barry Burton, and Rebecca Chambers. Chris gets the band back together for their biggest mission to date. Each member of the team assists in their own way. Barry pilots the helicopter and provides weapons. Rebecca is medical support and intelligence, and Jill assists Chris as his partner. I believe it's important for the series to conclude the same way it started, with the stars. Moving on to my favorite part, the setting. Their journey takes them to the remote mountains of the Antarctic. Think John Carpenter's The Thing, mixed with H.P. Lovecraft's at the mountains of madness. Very cold, desolate, and devoid of life, or so they thought. The team will venture through the frozen tundra as they explore various research outposts, leading them to the facility where the connections have been creating their bio army. But they soon discover what lies beneath the facility is something much more sinister. Below the facility is a labyrinth of tombs containing an ancient evil. The connections were too power hungry, too focused on if they could, they never stopped to think if they should. Thus, they unleash something far more powerful than anyone could have ever imagined. Moving on now to the gameplay. The Resident Evil series has a habit of continuously progressing with more action-heavy elements as a trilogy progresses. Think Resident Evil 1 to 3, Resident Evil 4 to 6, etc. With more action elements being introduced in Village, I'm worried this trend will continue into Resident Evil 9. Personally, I would like to see a blend of gameplay styles from the Resident Evil 2 and 4 remakes. Finding a middle ground that allows the game to have a slower pace, encouraging players to take their time and emphasize survival, while also also including the parry and melee mechanic for when needed. Now, this may sound a bit contradictory, but hold on. I would like to see the co-op system brought back for Jill and Chris. Now, before you click off the video or flip your table, hear me out. When I say co-op, don't think the over-the-top action of Resident Evil 5. Think more in line with the DLC Lost in Nightmares. Better yet, imagine Resident Evil 4 Remake with a friend. Now, if co-op is reintroduced, it's important to focus on survival horror and working together to overcome unthinkable odds. If you don't have a co-op companion, that's okay. AI has come a long ways over the years. Capcom actually experimented a bit with this in the Resident Evil 4 Remake, teaming you up with Ashley or Lewis. Moving on now to the enemies. I do not like the thought of going up against semi-intelligent, potential Chris Redfield cloned bioweapon. That sounds like Resident Evil 6 all over again. I would also like to move away from mythical creatures. Instead, I would like to go back to more experimental creatures that focus more on body horror and less on magical powers. I know Resident Evil finds a way to explain these abilities, but seeing someone mind control metal or shoot electricity out of their arm takes me right out of the horror experience. No fantasy bullshit. We could come up with something like the connections have been collecting various viruses, parasites, and bioweapons over the years. They were attempting to create a high mind clone army using the molded plaga and megamycete, but when the creatures escaped from the tombs and unleashed havoc to the facility, nothing was contained and this collection got out. Infected researchers you meet at the various outposts. An infected polar bear, that would be terrifying. A colony of infected penguins. Well, maybe not the penguins, because they would still probably be cute. You get the idea. 
One last enemy I would like to see is a variation of the tyrant, referred to as the Yeti. This primal savage beast will hunt the player from outpost to outpost, serving as the looming threat, similar to Mr. X or the Nemesis. Lastly, let's talk about the camera perspective. The over-the-shoulder perspective of Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 remakes seems to be the popular choice by modern Resident Evil players. It allows the players to see their characters as they go through their journeys and helps build a connection. With that said, Capcom has proven multiple perspectives can be done both in Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 Remake, which offered a first-person and VR mode. Personally, I don't see any reason why Capcom couldn't continue this to appeal to all fans. Each perspective feels like a new way to experience the same game and offers a good reason to replay. Experiencing these games in VR is incredibly immersive. It's hard to explain if you haven't tried it for yourself, but I'm glad Capcom is adding the option and I would like to see them continue with that in the future. Hell, throw in a fixed camera perspective for old-school Resident Evil players players like myself and I could die happy. Unfortunately, I don't think that'll ever happen, but one can dream. All right, so there you have it. What I would like to see in the upcoming Resident Evil 9. But now I'm curious to know your thoughts. Did you agree or disagree with any of my choices? What characters would you like to see return? What direction would you like to see the series go with Resident Evil 9? Let me know down below in the comments and let's have a discussion about it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and for all the latest Resident Evil 9 news, rumors, and discussions, make sure to subscribe. The Residents of Evil is a Patreon supported channel and also supported by our YouTube members. So if you'd like to become a member and unlock access to custom badges, emojis, and exclusive live streams, click that join button down below. You can join our survival horror community on Discord, link will be in the description, and I have the Duke here to tell you a little about our sponsor, G Fuel. Do you have need of anything for the road ahead? The Residents of Evil has expanded its services. Perhaps you're in need of a little pick-me-up. I recommend the G Fuel. You can even get a fair discount if you use the code ROE upon purchase. And as always, we thank you for your patronage, stranger. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we hope to see you back at the Residence of Evil.